Welcome to Information Service Engineering. This is lecture number four, Linked Data Engineering part two. And this is also the second part of the Sparkle query lecture. Here you will learn how to cope with more complex queries within Sparkle. Okay, remember the last query from the last section? We were filtering out results only in English language. Overall, we were looking for authors who have written some notable work and we put the restriction to these notable works, which are books, they should have more than 500 pages. And then we said, okay, we use a filter expression and then we apply this on the language and say, okay, the language of the author name as well as the language of the title should be in English. So what you can do here also in the filter expressions is, for example, you can combine several restrictions. And usually you do this with so-called sparkle operators that you put inside your filter queries. For example, when you are dealing with the result of Boolean values, then you have logical connectives. So you can, uh, for example, connect two separate filter queries by a logical end if both have to be fulfilled or by a logical or if one of them only has to be fulfilled. You can use comparisons when you have values. For example, you can use the equivalent sign. You can say two values should not be equivalent. And for numeric data types as well as for date, time, string or booleans, you also can use less than, greater than or less or equal or greater or equal. Then for all other data types, nevertheless, you have the comparison operators equal to or not equal to. And as long as you are dealing with numeric data types, of course, you can do arithmetic operations with the help of a plus sign, a minus or a multiplication sign or a division sign. In addition to these Sparkle operators, also you have the possibility in Sparkle to make use of regular expressions. You remember regular expressions from the first part of the lecture where we did natural language processing. Their reg uh, regular expressions were a rather interesting means to filter out specific patterns from text, from natural language text. And also here in Sparkle queries, you can make use of exactly this powerful technique. And this you do via the keyword regex, after which you can usually specify regular expressions. We will have a look at that at some examples. Furthermore, besides the regular expressions, you can also say or ask whether two terms A and B are exactly the same, then you use same term, or you can say, you can ask for whether the language of two terms matches, so whether it's the same language of A then used in B, and this you, therefore you use the term lang matches, which means the matching of languages. So these are the existing Sparkle operators. But now let's have a closer look on the regular expressions. For this we want to expand our original query only for those kind of books which contain in their title the word love. So let's have a look at the according filter expression that we use here. Here we use a filter expression uh, followed by the term regex which means here we are using a regular expression and then you write here in parentheses um, your regular expression and usually you start with a string on which the regular expression should be applied. And of course we are looking for titles and these titles should contain the word love. So first component of exactly this regular expression is the string where our regular expression is applied and this is the title variable here. Second variable then is the regular expression. We have to write the regular expression in double quotes. And this is a rather easy regular expression. We simply look for something which starts with the word laugh. And then we can use several flags. And the most important is this one. The I flag means I don't care whether the letters in uh, my string, they are written with capital letters or lowercase letters, so they don't take care about that. And this means we are looking here in that specific case for words in title which contain love, no matter whether it's written in capital letters or in lowercase letters. Let's have a look at the result of exactly this Sparkle query. So, I click on the link. You can do this as well on, on your home PC and then 
I run the query and you see we have two result columns, the author name and the title name and now all of these titles should contain love. So here you see for example what do we have here, D.H. Lawrence, Lady Chatterley's lover, of course there is the term love or what else, something I know probably, let's see, D.H. Lawrence again, Sons and Lovers, T.S. Eliot, the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock, never heard about that, interesting. But also here you see in the very first line you have here Spanish author Jorge Amado or not Spanish, I guess a uh, um, South American author and it's Gabriela, Clove and Cinnamon. And love of course it's part of that but it's only part of this word. So it's not the word love, it's only a substring here, what is looked for. So let's further refine our query. So we remember here this is the way how we include regular expressions into Sparkle queries. Let's make the regular expression a bit more, let's say, sophisticated and we only want to have book titles with, with, uh, which either start or end with the word love. So let's have a look at the regular expression we are using here within the filter regex and as you might remember from the natural language processing lecture, Looking for a specific expression at the start of a line, there we have to use the head operator. And looking for a specific expression at the end of a line, we have to, to look for exactly this dollar sign. So this means love stands either here at the end or at the beginning. And this is combined by, you know, this vertical bar. And this means this is the or. So this is a union, either that one or that one. Okay. Let's try out exactly that query. And by running that query, you see now we only have either love at the end of the name uh, of the title or at the beginning. So what do you have here, for example, that's interesting, C.S. Lewis, the allegory of love. Do I know somebody else? Not so many people. Ah, Elizabeth Gilbert, eat, pray, love, probably you know that or you've heard of that. So. All, oh yeah, Love in, Thai, in the Time of Cholera. Very nice book by uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Um, really good author, I um, really recommend it to you. That's nice. So use it to play around with it and also to see what's there in this huge knowledge base. So now you know how to deal with regular expressions here in Sparkle. Okay, what else could we do? Up to now, let's go back to that one. Usually all of these graph patterns are combined in uh, the following way that they are usually a conjunction, which means if one of these patterns does not exist, there will be no answer for exactly that author. So if the author, for example, here doesn't have a notable work, it will for sure not occur in the answer. If there is no title given in English, there will be no result for exactly that answer. So all of these sparkle graph patterns are combined in a conjunctive way. Sometimes, of course, it would be interesting to have the author also in your results, but then also indicating, okay, this is an author, but um, of course he has a title that does not start with love, but of course we want to see that there, this author is also in our database. And we want to make certain things of these graph patterns only to be executed in an optional way. And for this, there is the keyword optional available. You see this here. And you see how to use that. For example, we want to retrieve in addition to our English titles, also the German title. But we know not necessarily always the German title is also available. So we only want to have the title if it's available. But nevertheless, we want to retrieve all books. And therefore, I put the graph pattern, which exactly here states I want to only select works whose RDFS label has then another title. This is the DE title for the German title and we put a filter expression there that the language of the title should be German, should be DE. And you see here we put this in curly braces and write in front of it the keyword optional which means this is an optional constraint. So using a constraint like this complies usually to a so-called left outer join and the people among you who are familiar with, um, 
relational databases, they will know how to interpret that. So let's see how, if I use exactly this optional query, what kind of result it will produce. So what you see here, now we have a third column. So first we have author name, then we have the English title, and then we have the German title. And here, for example, for Lewis Carroll's Alice Adventure in Wonderland, we have the German title Alice im Wunderland. And you see here another one, Jonathan Swift with Gulliver's Travels, and here we have Gulliver's Reisen in German. But if we go a bit more down, you see here, we only selected the first hundred. There are, of course, books who don't have, or which don't have a German title. And for that, of course, then this field will be empty. If I wouldn't have used the optional keyword here, they would not be displayed. So optional also displays them. And I see here, for example, for C.S. Lewis, the screw type letters, there is no German title available, which is also an interesting information. So this is for optional. We, al we already talked about that usually the combination of two of these graph patterns is conjunctive. But there is also the possibility to combine them in a disjunctive way, which means with a logical OR. So which means either the first or the other one or both can be fulfilled. And this combination with the OR is used or is realized with another keyword which is called union. So which means by combining graph patterns with unions, we're combining them with a logical OR and not with a logical and, like in case if we simply put the graph patterns one after the other. So here you see the example. Here is the logical disjunction, the keyword union. And of course, the parts we want to logically combine by this union, they have to be identified. So I put all the graph patterns that have to be combined by a union with another graph pattern. I have to put them in curly braces. So in this particular example, we want to retrieve all people who have influenced the famous Spanish author Miguel de Cervantes. And of course, we want also likely select all people who have been influenced by Miguel de Cervantes. The point is usually an influencer not necessarily has always been influenced by the guy who has influenced him or the other way around. So, this is a typical query where you want to combine both sets or both answers with a logical OR. Let's have a look on the result. We go to the Sparkle endpoint and we run the query. And you see here we have two result columns. First column it's influencers and the second one is influenced. So the first one are the influencers of Miguel de Cervantes. And the influencer here are not only persons, as you see here. So Cervantes has been influenced by the Italian Renaissance author um, Boccaccio. But nevertheless, also he has been influenced by overall Italian Renaissance and by chival uh, chivalric romance, for example. So these are concepts in literature which have influenced exactly that author. And on the other hand, in the second column, you see the authors who have been influenced by Miguel de Cervantes. And of course, you have here, for example, another, not Spanish, but it's a Portuguese author, José Saramago, or Voltaire has been influenced by him. Also Mark Twain, Charles Dickens, Henry Fielding, then another guy I don't know, Miguel de Unamuno, never heard about him, Graham Greene, I know again, and of course then Fyodor Dostoevsky, famous authors all influenced by Miguel de Cervantes. So this was the logical union. Another thing what I also wanted to show you is, for example, you can put things in a Spark quit, uh, Sparkle query pattern which should not be fulfilled, so something like a negation. For example, we could look for all these authors who are in DBpedia but don't have any entry for notable work. If I look for an entry notable work, I only get the authors who have a notable work, but I want to have all the rest for which exactly this entry does not exist. And for this, what I do is I complement this graph pattern. So you, here 
you create a filter pattern and you use another filter keyword which is not exists and then you specify again in curly braces some kind of pattern which should not be fulfilled or not exist for exactly your results for the results you want to display and here what you do is um, you filter here first for authors who are of type writer and then you say a phrase or a pattern like author has notable work work should not exist for these authors. Now you would assume, okay, an author who does not have a notable work, probably it's a rather unknown author. Let's verify that by simply trying out that query on the Sparkle endpoint of DBpedia. So I run the query and now I have a long list of authors. And let's see, yeah, yeah some names seem to be familiar for me. So for example, um, that one, Marion Zimmer Bradley, so fantasy author, for example. Roald Dahl, also interesting author, English author. I really like his stories. Jack London, you should know, it's also a famous classic author. Or like here, Alessandro Manzoni. So DBpedia not necessarily is, let's say, complete. Alessandro Manzoni, the Italian people among you might know that, rather famous author in Italy. He had this uh, famous work, notable work, um, The Betrothed, uh, Il Promessi Sposi. You can Look this up by simply clicking on it and then you are ending or uh, uh, you are getting to the DBpedia page for exactly that entity and there you see or you can read it already in the descriptive summary that this is a famous Italian poet and author and here he is famous for a specific novel. But exactly that information unfortunately is missing in DBpedia. Not everything is there but of course it should be complemented and you can find it out with exactly these kind of queries. Okay, so far so good, but you can even do more with Sparkle and you will see then in the next part of the lecture how we can even achieve more complex queries, more sophisticated queries with Sparkle.